Hey guys, welcome back to VBA to Z. Today I'll show you how to use the VBA to interact or connect with the web document or web pages using uh, VB as well as the HTML object library. Okay, uh, using this method, I'll show you how to log into the Gmail account and also show you how to identify the element, you know, the object information like the ID or the name, like the labels and so on which you can use to you know um, control the web pages for uh, using VBA itself okay so first thing I'll go to uh, this web page called uh, basically um, Gmail where we can log into the Gmail mail.google.com so first thing we are prompted here is to enter the email ID okay enter your email ID and click on next so before we can um, input the email ID here and click on next, we need to find out what are the name of you know this input box and this button basically. So I'll right click on it and uh, click on inspect element. You can do the same thing for um, from any browser like uh, Chrome or from Firefox. I'm using Internet Explorer for now. So here is the input name. Input name is email, ID is email, spell check, false, type, and all this. Okay, and so this is the um, attributes of this particular input box. So what you can do is just right click on it and then copy the, you know, information. And then I'll just put it here for now on top, okay? So we can refer it back later. So similarly, I'll do it for... Um, I'll just scroll down a bit and then do inspect element for the button next button as well oh sorry so when I click on uh, inspect on this input name is sign in and then the ID is next okay we need to be concerned more about the ID because that's the that's the one we're looking for and then um, the other information are you know the attribute information is good to know but we are not using that for now so I'll do the same thing I'll copy this and I'll put this on top okay as a comment so similarly you'll put in your email ID here for example um, gmail.com and then click on next so we're prompted to put in the password I'll do inspect element for this password uh, input field the ID is password pass wd basically I'll just back this up here as well so this is the password and then if you want to keep yourself sign in this this is checkbox so I'm gonna inspect element on this as well yep on this one and this is input name is persistent cookie okay so I'll just copy this as well and then the final thing we need to do here is click on sign in okay so I'll inspect the element for the sign in button as well so this is sign in I'll copy this and then I'll come back and back it up here so the name uh, the ID for this is sign in okay so these are the buttons and the input box that we'll be working on with our code down here which I've already written to save us some time but I'll walk you through it and everything so I'll just close this for now okay so basically the, this function requires three things to be passed so the username is basically the email id and then the password and then uh persistent cookie is basically give me sign in sign in okay as boolean and then the password and the email id as string and then this is supposed to return true or false i'll just make this boolean so if it's a sign in successfully it will return true else false okay so first thing before you start writing the code to manipulate the HTML document is to go to tools from your editor and then click on reference and then from here you can uh, you need to select two things one is the internet controls Microsoft internet controls and then the other thing is Microsoft HTML object library so um, if you don't find this on top this the names are sorted you know alphabet alphabetically so scroll down and then uh, reference it to these two libraries okay and then after you check these two boxes click on OK I'll just cancel it for now because I've already done it so the first thing is I'm declaring the, the uh, basically the Internet Explorer and the document 
so this part and then this is declaring that uh, uh, so this is uh, early binding as in like uh, you're declaring you know the objects and then manipulating using them you know uh, uh, accordingly as you've declared so the password is uh, Microsoft HTML input element so similarly I've declared uh, that these are my variables okay this is my basically internet internet explorer and then the document and then these are my password the user ID is basically the let me just reorder this a little bit so this is email and then this is password that this is to click on uh, I'll put in order so that uh, it's good so click on next uh, this is declaring that my NEXTBT is the the next button okay I'm going to be my next button so oh this is sign in button this is sign in and then this is before signing um you know this is the button that checkbox that we check it if we want to keep ourselves sign in okay so this is keep me sign in for example so going straight down if there is error just skip to the bottom that's the this is what it is doing and then here i'm setting you know the object and then this is my explorer and then from this uh, explorer i'm navigating into the url so the url is this and then uh, you know basically this line is uh, with the two semicolon this is basically is like this so this part is basically waiting for the web page to load okay and then um, i'm setting that uh, the ie document will be the document that is loaded and then I'm saying just make it visible this part is to make it visible so if you don't want if you want to sign in without making the browser visible uh, uh, you can just turn this to false so after reaching here I'm basically saying you know just wait for two seconds so now plus application dot wait now plus two seconds here okay so for example if I just make this to zero zero and then like this two seconds as soon as you hit enter it automatically changes to 12 okay so basically I'm saying here wait for two seconds and then um, saying that uh, from this browser find the button input box called email okay so the first thing we found was the ID email so I'm saying that um, user ID variable fill is equal to uh, the item called email okay and then similarly the next button so the next button ID is itself next ID is next okay so here I'm saying that uh, user ID field is the one with the email ID and then next button is the one with next ID okay and then after I um, set the object I'm putting a value so whatever uh, whatever email ID you're passing here is gonna be you know you, that particular user id field is going to be your email id here that is the variable you'll be passing on okay after putting the email id i'm waiting for two seconds again because you can enter the you can enter the email id that fast right so i'm just uh, giving some time okay after that after waiting for two minutes i'm saying next button dot click okay so after putting the email id i'm saying click on it after clicking on it I'm saying wait for two uh, one more second and then I'm saying the password field is going to be the field with uh, with the input box ID called password this is the one I've, we found it out here ID is password um, so as you know these are just the comments for our reference so similarly I did it for uh, you know keep me sign in checkbox is equal to the one with the ID called persistent cookie and then I'm saying person cookie will be the one remember me whatever you pass it is available here so if you put this to true if you put this to true it is gonna be checked if you make it to false it's gonna be unchecked okay so after putting that after putting the password after checking the box you know as far your refer uh, you know the par parameters that you've passed and then after waiting for three seconds 
is gonna click on the sign in button so for the sign in button here I got a little bit lost uh, so I'm thinking that there are you know multiple sign in buttons just I'm not sure why it's set up in that manner by Google but um, so I'm saying uh, the index is going to be one so from the multiple sign in buttons that are there just refer to the one with one index so that's how I was trying with zero as well and then I tried with one and it worked okay so we're saying that uh, the sign in button is going to be the web element with the ID sign in and then the index is one okay so once that is set I'm saying click on uh, sign in button dot click and then wait for the web browser to load okay so let's try it out uh, so log into gmail id sub test the code so let's test our function so i'll say call and then i'll put in my so first thing is the user id that i need to pass so i'll say bb.xpr.gmail.com just ensure that everything is correct and the password is the one i've already assigned earlier it's called password x and then I'll say don't keep me sign in so I'll say false okay so when I run this I'm expecting that this code is gonna load the Explorer um, go through all this code one by one you know and then sign in, sign in for, for us okay so let's try to run this I'm just gonna click on run sorry this select this code and run um, it didn't understand this just give me one second maybe variable name is wrong okay it's x password not password x okay so this is the constant variable that I've already set so that I don't have to display my password here so I'm running it so it started the browser put in the email id and click on next and then put in the password this is checked this is supposed to be unchecked okay and then click on sign in so this is um this is the way to refer to the html objects there in the web pages and then you can control them you know using this uh, the document HTML Microsoft HTML document library so this is basically how you can um, refer to the objects there are multiple ways of uh, connecting to the web pages uh, as for me normally if I have to do any automation regards to um, the web pages I use the iMacros but uh, since my office does not you know many of the corporates does not use iMacro or something like that I use the HTML this uh, method to connect to the library you have already seen many of the codes regards to ADO for the SharePoint and stuff like that but uh, this particular method also comes very handy when you have to fill up the form when you have to you know write to the web pages or retrieve the information from there so I hope uh, you found this useful uh, you try to play around from your end as well and if you have any questions just come back to me I'll put in this particular code uh, you know in the video description and uh, I'll wait to see if you have any questions so thank you for watching and um, have uh, a good day ahead bye bye